Hey guys, JC Smith here. Well, today we got a little frost on the pumpkin. Literally. It is cold today. Heavy frost last night. Still got some frost on the old trash bag here. I wrapped this differential cover last night to keep any rainwater. All right, let's see. We get any rust in there? Any condensation? Nothing. I'll take that any day of the week and twice on Sunday. That's the plan this morning. We're going to put the carrier back in, put the differential cover on, and we're moving on to axle joints. We're going to change out axle joints, change out ball joints, get everything on this axle back together and assembled. Um, we got our rotors back, they're, t they're turned, machined, and uh, it's all ready to go. When you go to put this in, very important that when you're putting it in, you're making sure that your pinion or your ring gear is meshed with your pinion before you start pushing it in. Once it's meshed in there, sometimes I'll take a little dead blow and I'll tap on the carrier lightly, you know, and on the back side here to get it in place. And then before I go start tightening, I take a mirror and I'll look back in here to be sure that the race of the bearing is seated. Make sure we're square, make sure it's straight, not cockeyed. Because the last thing you want is to try and torque this thing down and it's sitting cockeyed. You don't ever want to hit them races or the bearing. Because if you do, you put a ding in it, it'll just wear out, bind up and all that. So, that being said, I've checked all this and I'm going to do a one more look over of everything before I close it up. I like to spin the bearing, uh, spiders here, wipe them all down. Make sure there's nothing. I saw a little bit of something on here. You know, like I said, once it, once you get to the point you think you're, you've you got it all, go over it again. You know, it only takes a minute or two, and uh, it's well worth it. So I'm going to get the main caps in here, get my torque wrench, and I'll get ready to put this together. Okay, we're going to put the bearing caps on. It's very important, too, that the mating surface right here is clean. Okay, you got to make sure, because if there's anything sitting on this machine surface, or this machine surface right here, because it's going to sit right in like this, it will not let it sit flat, and you won't get a good torque. Now, they don't use Loctite on these from the factory, or at least this one didn't, so I'm not going to put Loctite on it. I'm going to put them back in, careful and being sure that I got my orientation right. You see this here, that's the way they came out. Okay, this one has an R on it, but I don't know if that really means anything. Um, let's see. Now this has an R also. So we want to clean them all up good, and you want to clean up in here too. Make sure there's no debris, no nothing, because you don't want it to torque incorrectly. So let me get that on, I'll bring it back in a minute. Guys, don't forget the torque ease of spec. Um, you can find the specs for these on so many different places. You can call a dealer, you can call... Uh, get on Mitchell on demand or something like that. There's plenty of places to find that torque spec um, So find it for your truck and make sure you get them torqued in good. Okay, so So here's the front axle I've got the u-joints taken apart. Um, I've wire wheeled them as best as I can I really wish we had a cabinet Sandblaster because I'd put them in and sandblast and get all this cleaned up, but I don't and it's Ohio. It's gonna rust again, so um, I got it all apart. Here's the long side axle, and then here's the yoke. This one, the seal was kind of uh, loose on there, so it let some rust get in. So what I want to do is I want this edge cleaned up real good. So I'm going to take a file. It's going to take a while, but I'm going to get down in that groove, and you'll see as I move the file around, you see how I'm getting a sharp edge in there? I need that that seal to sit just right in there. This is very time consuming. And I'm sure most people will be like, yeah, it just doesn't matter. But, you know, it, it matters to me. So I just take a flat file and go all the way around it, which it's going to take me a while, and look down here on this axle. Same thing right here. There's a edge to be cleaned out here. There's some rust in it. But probably the most important thing I'm going to do with a file is before I put the U-joints in, I like to go across our flats here and make sure that there's no high spots or any mushroomed out places so that when I go to put the U-joint in um, 
there's enough room for the clip. You don't want to take material out. All I'm looking to do is if it happened to get mushroomed or whatever, I just want to be sure it's clean. That's all I'm doing right here. Just looking, making sure it's a good flat surface. You see how we're hitting here and we're hitting here, but not so much over here. Just make sure it's... That's all I'm after. Get the rust off of it, because the worst thing we can do is try and put this together and there's a little bit of rust here and a little bit of rust build up here and then we can't uh, get our clips and we've got to squeeze those caps too tight and then you, that U-joint will wear out prematurely because there's too much tension. Like you can see how, you see the detail in there, see how rough that is? Mm -hmm. There's some raised up rust there. But I'm just, I'm just leaning against that back edge there, keeping a file as straight as I can. Okay, so now you can see the flat where the last one doesn't show up real well, does it? <clears throat> there, that's better. You can see the flat where the C clip, the this clip that goes around the cup of the U joint, where it rides right there. And that's all I want to do. I want to make sure that that area is good and clean, because obviously if that's tighter, it's going to be tighter on my U joints. So I'm going to get all this cleaned up. We'll bring it back once we start putting the U-joints in. Next, I'm going to get on to pressing out the ball joints, the old ball joints, and getting the new ones in. For that, I'm going to use OTC uh, truck ball joint kit. So I'll start taking this out there. This one's held in with a C-clip right here. And this one, I believe, is just pushed in with no clip. So I'll get going on that. Okay, we're going to press out these ball joints now. And rather than beat them out with a hammer, uh, I already got this, the bottom clip off the snap ring. I'm using the OTC ball joint press. And in here, okay, it has the application as to removal and installation of your ball joints. It tells you which pieces that you need, okay. And then you go over... See if I can find something to put, in. put my favorite ratchet in there. So then you can come over to your OTC master kit, match up the corresponding numbers, tool number to that, grab them, and I'll show you how it works. I got it set up here with what the book says, the numbers you're supposed to use, and what adapters, and it actually tells you in the book which procedure to what to do first. So it, it told me to take out the bottom one first. All right, the bottom one was r rusted in there so badly that I put, I had it basically in the bottom set up just like this, and I also had to hit it with my air hammer to get it to come out. Because you don't want to just sit there and impact on this, because all you're going to do is spread the jaws. Okay, so I put a little tension on it, and I take the air hammer, come in the back, hit it a couple times with the air hammer. As you can tell, it went pretty deep, and uh, then I would I would hit the impact again put tension on again, hit this, and then it came out with no troubles. Just like this one. Okay, this one I've done the same thing. And as you see on the threads, I always put a little bit of grease on the threads before I use it. Um, that way I'm not messing them up. And then that's the adapter. Basically, you can see the ball joint. This goes over top of it when it's sit in there so that you're able to push it up into this sleeve and then it comes up through the open when it comes out and the top of the C-clamp the same way, the C-press. Alright, so that's that. Now, next thing, we grab the file, another file. Okay, so the bottom of this has a place where the C-clamp rides. It is the C-clamp, the snap ring. There's a snap ring much like that, and it rides right here. So we want to make sure again that we have all the rust off of there. I'm not looking to remove the metal. I just want to see all the rust gone and flat. So I'll work on that some more. And then inside, 
the new ball joint has a collar on it. You see that collar and it's knurled. So it's supposed to go in here. Well, there's a recess right in here. And you want to make sure we get this clean because there's rust in here. Because we need that ball joint to sit in there perfectly straight and level so that when it's in there, it's seated. If it's sitting cockeyed or something like that, we can't get snap ring on. So we're going to clean this up real good in here. Getting really good in this corner. I like to use a chisel right here because it's pretty easy to get in that corner. And make sure the flat is exactly as clean as it can be. Okay, can you see that? All right, so now we're good and good and clean in the corner. So we go to press the new ball joint in. It should sit flat there, and this will give you an idea. Look at the top of this. See how cruddy this is? That's how the bottom was. So we're gonna clean that up too. So let me get on that. And we'll bring you back. And we're ready to press them in. Everything cleaned up. As you might be able to see there. I've got that flat surface all cleaned up. The bottom side does not have a snap ring. This, the top ball joint does not have anything to hold it in because it's actually, the way it's sandwiched in there, um, it really can't come out. Um, so that's why they do that, I'm sure. So, And I don't file inside here because we have knurls in here, and this is a, a very, very close fit. You can see how fine those knurls are on there. So don't ever file inside that, okay? So let me get set up. We'll get pressing. So... Now we're going to press this one in, and it's kind of the reverse. All right, they want this one on top. Take this off just to be safe so it didn't get stuck up in there. It doesn't say you have to, but I don't want to get stuck up in that adapter. All right, so they want you to have this one here, this here, and you have to back this one off pretty good because there's a cup to go on the bottom, this one here, which is larger than the diameter of the ball joint. So getting it set just right is pretty important. Okay, we need it level and straight. So take a minute to make sure you got everything the way you want, and then we're gonna run it in, and hopefully it's pretty uneventful. pretty good because it's seated. I'll get another battery. I'll finish seating this in and I'll show you what it is when we're done. Okay, get a light. Make this a little bit easier to see. All right, so you want to make sure that down in here, all the way around is touching. All right, you got to make sure all the way around. And then on the bottom, because this is not straight. Okay, this is, this is cast on an angle. I don't know if that shows up or not. It's not going to be even on the bottom. You're going to have some show up here, and you'll be sticking out here, just like the old one. So, worth it to pay attention to what, you, what you're taking out and what it looks like before you take it out. But this one, it's in. It's flat all the way around. So, we're done with that one. I'll press the bottom one in, and uh, once I get that one in, the next thing we're going to do is this knuckle on that truck has vacuum operated hubs okay that's this port right here so what we're going to do is we're going to take a straw with brake parts cleaner and we're going to blow it down in here and we're going to make sure that it comes out right here you can see there's like a mud dauber's nest in there so now's the time you want to take care of that and get all that crud out of there i'll get a pick we'll dig it out of there or a blow gun and we got to make sure we can get vacuum through here because uh if we put it all together and we can't get vacuum in here we need to take it back apart to blow the crap out, so we'll do that next. It's pressed in, um, a little dirty, I just stood it up. Uh, snap ring's in. I always take and go around the snap ring and tap it all the way around. And also, I'd like to look at it and make sure it's seated. You know, that way we're, we're confident it's in there and 
we know it's uh, gonna stay. Uh, I also went ahead and blew out. You can see the crap's gone out of there, and it was full. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is file this real quick, just for cleaning it up, make a nice, a little bit nicer surface to go together once we uh, put the hub in. It's not necessary, but yeah, I just like it. I just like it clean and ready to go. So I'm gonna do that, and this one's ready, and then we can start on the next one. We'll do just uh, do the same procedure. Knock them out, put the new ones in, get it all ready to go. Um, next thing I did was I took a flat file, nice big long file here, and faced off the top of this, okay? And all I'm trying to do is make sure there's no rust, no crud that would make the bearing sit a little cattywampus. Um, we blew out the vacuum hole here. If you're not familiar, this particular truck is what's called ESOF, electric shift on the fly four-wheel drive. So what the the way it works is there's a switch on the dash, you turn the switch from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, that sends a signal to the ECM, it sends it to ABS, um, and then also what it does is it activates a solenoid, a solenoid, and then it applies vacuum to this hub. At the same time, it's applying electric power to a shift motor on the transfer case to engage a full drive. Okay, so when the vacuum comes down, it comes in the top of the knuckle. I guess I should show you it like that. The top of the knuckle, just as it sits like this, you can see how where the tie rod goes. It comes in right here on this fitting. Okay, and it's cast. The passageway is cast, and you can see it right here. All right, and we have that big expensive seal. It goes right in here, so it, it blocks the vacuum into the hub. Okay, gets it down into here to where it can get through the center of the axle and into the actual actual vacuum actuated lockout. Okay, so it's very important that that's clear, and it's also important that this surface right in here is clean. Now that was rusty. It looked just like this one just bring it up here and show you what we start with it looked just like this one okay get all this crud knocked off and let me see what I show you what I use it's just a flapper wheel it's a 3m flapper wheel which this one's about at the end of its life uh, it's a fine grit just enough to knock the rust off is all we're trying to do so that this is a good smooth clean bore okay that's ready to go so um, I'm not going to video this because, you know, we just showed you the same thing, rinse and repeat, right? So, uh, that being said, that's done, that's done. Uh, I'll bring you back when we start pressing in U joints, or axle joints, into the front axle shafts. So, until then, I'll, I'll get this done. Well, we got them painted. We got them cleaned up, primed and painted. Um, however, it's just not dry enough for me to put the axle joints in. So, I'm probably just going to have to wait till tomorrow, let them dry overnight. Because if I don't and I, I start messing with these and it messes up all this paint, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be less than happy. I did get the hubs or the knuckles back on the axle, so let me show you that. All right, so here's the hubs back in. The knuckles are back on. This one's a lock nut. Um, doesn't have a cotter pin or anything. Uh, this one is a castle head, castle nut, and it does have a cotter pin. And my seals are in, and let's see. I put a little bit of grease in here so it doesn't rust before we get the hubs in. And same thing on this side, so we're all ready to go. Got my grease fittings in, I grease the joints. So now all I gotta do is wait for the axle joint, the axle shaft parts to dry, and I'll uh, go ahead and put the U joints in. We'll start assembling and get it back underneath there. Got my differential all sealed up. Turned out pretty good. So that's that. Hopefully, uh, let's say tomorrow, hopefully we're stuffing this back underneath the truck. It could go a little bit faster, but I wanted to get all them ball joints and stuff changed before we put it in. So, all right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.